What's up, everybody? Sean here with another Live to Roll Live. Uh, this is going to be an awesome show, a pretty fun show for us this week. Uh, we'll get into that, but let's do a couple quick intros. Uh, so let's just get it started. My name is Sean. I'm a C5, C6 quad from a snowboarding accident. And um, let's pass it over to my co-host and our chef for the day, Mr. Tom. <laughs> I'll have Monica on me because I'm not, I'm not a chef. Uh, but I'm going to do a little cooking for you guys today. I'm going to put the chef hat on at least for an hour. And um, yeah, I'm Tom Conaway, C5, C6 Quad. Sorry for this crazy wire. Uh, my phone charger. I uh, was hanging from my chair. And uh, uh, before we do get into today's, uh, I guess, topic and what we're going to be doing, um, we want to thank our sponsors uh, at the top of the hour today. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, a big shout out to... Uh, Mobility professionals and uh, urology professionals, uh, they're a uh, durable medical equipment uh, company out here in Southern California, Mobility Pros. They specialize in wheelchairs and uh, other DME type equipment. And then um, Urology Professionals is another branch of Mobility Pros, uh, but they're a national branch that does uh, catheter supplies. Um, and they're awesome. A uh, great company, great people. Um, Sean, you say about it? Yeah, no, perfect, bro. That was awesome. And exactly. Uh, Mobility Professionals is uh, Southern California based. So if you're in the Southern California area and need a wheelchair, they can help you out. And the urology professionals are nationally based. So if you guys need catheters anywhere in the country, they can hook you up. And they are a great company. Um, they're both owned by the same people, so run by the same people. Um, they're our friends. Um, and help us out in the community, part of the Triumph Foundation, all that stuff. And then yeah. another quick shout out to our other sponsor, Mr. Ben Tipton uh, over here <laughs> with our super chats. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. You the man, brother. <laughs> uh, uh, just oh. give a quick shout out. Baba Conway, uh, who I'm sure is out there watching. Uh, I'm not sure if you can... We try to get our chat thing going. If you can, type in the chat and say, hey. Uh, love you, I miss you. Uh, but today we're gonna be doing some cooking, you guys. Now, I'm not doing this to like show off my chef skills because uh, I am not a chef uh, at all. This is just to demonstrate a uh, simple dish, uh, some beginning uh, steps. Somebody who's interested um, in cooking, maybe hasn't tackled that. Uh, you know, post-injury, uh, it's a big thing to get back into. Um, it can be a little daunting, uh, but I just wanted to show you like how I got started. This is like, I, first thing I've made was mac and cheese, uh, but I try to stay away from like boiling water and like boiling noodles and stuff. It's just really sketchy and dangerous if I were to ever, you know, mess up and spill some on me. Um, so I try to leave that when I have a caregiver here, someone to help me. Um, if I was doing like boiling stuff, um, but we are doing some soup today. We'll show you how I do that. And, um, the second thing I ever cooked on my own independently was a grilled cheese sandwich. Uh, and it's one of my favorites. Grilled cheeses are dope. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. Just a little simple, easy grilled cheese. It's nothing fancy. Um, and then we're going to, um, do a little tomato basil soup to go with it. Um, and like I said, I'm not... Doing this, trying to like show off um, or like impress with my culinary skills, but to just demonstrate how it's done, how it can be done, how I do it, uh, maybe inspire some other individuals out there uh, who, you know, I want to start cooking to go for it, hopefully with some tips and tricks. So um, I think we'll just dive on in, right, Shawty Boy? Yeah, man, let's get into it. If you want to start going, let's go, man. Uh, I. <laughs> I want to see it. I think everybody else wants to see it too. And I, I'm not much of a chef. I've made sandwiches and a few things like that. <laughs> Oatmeal. <laughs> um, but yeah, I haven't even gone as far as like a grilled cheese or anything. So yeah, dude, I've seen some of your skills before and they are actually quite impressive. So let's uh, uh, let's get into it if you want, man. Appreciate it, man. We will. Just let me call it real quick. Uh, Celtic Bear out here representing the cold um, East Coast. Uh, you're you're awesome, dude. I commend you, man. Um, that's some crazy crazy weather out there. 
not too bad out here in the valley. It's a little chilly. We got some wind chill today. Today's actually nice out here. It's like mid seventies uh, and like sunny. Um, at least peaked like high for the day. It got to like seventy four or something. Um, and uh, but the other thing too is anybody in the chat, feel free to ask questions about um, what I'm doing. You know, ask questions about anything. Um, comment on whatever, and uh, we'll try to you know, um, Sean's man in the chat if I'm not reading it, and uh, we'll you know try to answer uh, everything we can. Um, and a uh, quick <laughs> thank you, Chad, for the super sticker. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Bye. Are you here? Yeah, I appreciate you, Chad. Yeah, you're awesome, man. I had to charge my uh, phone before. And I have a 10 foot long iPhone cable. Don't ask me why. Uh, well, let me get rid of this thing so I don't get it single my uh, TLC um, just got an air fryer for Christmas and found that it's good for quads. I've been wanting to check out an air fryer. I've heard good things. Andrew turned yourself into a chef last year. Nice. I've never personally done toaster work. ovens, no burning yet. Nice. That's what I've used as toaster ovens too, Garrett. Same here, man. That's all I've really used. Uh, and that was very basic just to like heat some toast and stuff up uh, a few things but, uh, uh, so number one comes to cooking prep 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 you gotta prepare your station um you gotta have you know everything get everything um i did a lot of my prep uh, i'll turn my camera and bend it down a little bit and show you guys my cutting board i got some <laughs> bread and some stuff right here um cheese is in the fridge i still gotta grab it but it, I live in a tiny apartment in LA, and um, that's real estate out here. Uh, so the nature of that is just buying for space, having this sort of thing, and sometimes inaccessible locations. So y'all missed out on the behind the scenes, like getting with skillets and everything out from these drawers. Uh, we'll have to do a video on that one day. Um, but I did save a little bit. I'm gonna my mugs and stuff are stored up above my sink. Um, over here, so I'm gonna grab one of my mugs because that's where we're gonna heat up the soup in. So bear with me for a second while I grab the mug, and then we'll get into the food prep. And you guys can check out a couple of the videos we posted the last couple of weeks. Are one on how Tom uses that reacher so effectively in his little elbow grip like that, which is dope. Look at those skills, damn. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then also a little bit of a tour of his apartment uh, uh, when we were doing a little vlog hanging out there. <laughs> Quad girl. Um, I currently don't live by myself. I live with my grandmother uh, and my uncle. But uh, I did live independently for eight years um, before moving in here a couple years ago. And Tom, how long have you lived independently? Um, gosh, it's gonna sound crazy, but maybe nine years. Uh, nine. 20, years. 20, we're coming up on twenty twenty three. One second is wild. Coming old name, you guys. Um, but yeah, that's how long I've been doing it fully, fully independently. Now I got. Hey, what up, Mike Lee? How's it going, dude? Uh, yeah, quads could get look out indeed. Yeah. Yeah, things could get crazy here. We <laughs> we tried um, to prep as much as possible, but... <laughs> I first moved out. Um, I did have a lot more care. Um, I, I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit so I can show the um, my cutting board and stuff. You know, see some of what I'm doing. Um, and we're going to start making the sandwich. Now, kitchen tools that are quad friendly and effective. Um, I have a hard time working farther away from me. Like, I'm not going to lean over and do this on the table. And my table is uh, just this little fold out table that sits in my apartment, so it's pretty short. Um, the way I overcome that is um, 
Yes. Set up a lap. Bam. It's a 13 inch cutting board. Ordered off Amazon. Uh, I think my dad got it for me when I first moved out. Uh, shout out Papa Conway. Uh, nice. Love you, friend. Um, and that's why what, one of the things I did when I first moved out is I, like me and my mom and dad, my sister, my brother, like we tackled like some of this like cooking stuff. Like uh, we went out shopping. We like started looking for some quad friendly cooking tools. Uh, we got the cutting board. Um, you know, I will show you this spatula that I use. It's just like a really wide spatula. Um, and I don't use any sensitive knives or like that. I have used rocker knives in the past, um, which can be great for certain types of like food prep. Um, but we're not doing anything crazy today like that. Um, so I'm actually going to set this down for a minute. Um, I'm going to my butter. Get my butter. And yo, part of cooking, it too is making a little bit of a mess. Like able-bodied people do it. Uh, you gotta do it a little bit more if you're a quiet try to do it. Uh, spill a little bit. It's okay. You know, like it's just the nature of the beast. Spill a little bit on yourself. Uh, maybe don't wear super nice clothes if you are trying to cook or anything white. Um, that is definitely setting yourself up for a disaster. Um, but it can be pretty a little dirty. You know, it's one of the things I've talked to a lot of quads about. I have a hard time eating out in public and stuff like that. You know, they're afraid they're going to spill food or, um, you know, have difficulty in that regard. And, you know, if you smell a little bit, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Like, that's kind of... It's life, know, man. <laughs> like, um, you know, you can always... Have paper towels or whatever, you know, a little towel, something, protect your clothes. But I mean, really, it's not that big a deal if there's a little mess here and there. We're humans, it's okay. Um, gonna grab my cheese out of the fridge. Give me one second. Uh, we'll go through some of these uh, chat things too while uh, he's grabbing stuff. You guys are. What's up? Oh, yeah, show. Check out the fridge setup. Now, this is again all some innovation on my part, my mom's part, and then my uh, genius father um, who helped me set up a lot of this stuff early on in my apartment. My, I just have a little mini fridge. Um, uh, but it's lifted up for me on this little, I don't know what to call it, tabletop storage area thing. It just, we found something that fit in here, and my dad just put the fridge up on top of it. So I got, and, you know, elevated things. And that's how I do it. Now, how do I get stuff out of my fridge? I just a lot of stuff until it kind of falls <laughs> oh, that's, now, a tip, that's a typical quad move. <laughs> uh, you know, I just kind of smack until I keep grabbing it. I'm good. Um, now, I always like make this joke like nine times out of ten, like I got it, but like one out of ten, it'll fall. Oh no, I'll just have to use my grabber or whatever to try to figure it out. Um, and yeah, there's, there's my fridge. Okay, let me uh, You're making everybody hungry in the chat. It seems to be the general consensus. <laughs> uh, uh, Celtic Bear used to be a professional chef. Went to school for it. Um, yeah, I'm always impressed by culinary. I can't get enough cooking show. Okay. Now, I'm breezing through some of this stuff, like, Leaning forward, lifting up that cutting board with the stuff on it, and like getting back towards my lap. Like, that might even look hard to like some pods. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, this is like years of doing this stuff on my own. You know, I've been like help the muscles, streamlines, things, and like, you know, it's so if some of this looks easy, like it was, it wasn't always. Um, it was just a lot of years. 
the work and try to figure it out and practice, practice, practice. Like you do it enough times, you just end up inevitably looking better at it. Um, I got my cheese pre sliced because we in America, it's easy to do so. <laughs> That's about the same move I use for opening ziplocs. Bite one side, get the finger in, and peel the other. <laughs> if you're cooking for other people, then you better be afraid of some cooties because you know it's just the nature. <laughs> of the um, you know, like my best grip is my teeth, um, so I have to rely on it to a certain extent. Um, now I don't really have any fine motor control. Uh, at all. Uh, delicate task like getting a piece of cheese out of the package. Uh, kind of be a little blundery. But you just got to finesse it. It tore a little bit on the end, but that's okay. I'll snatch it out of there. <clears throat> um, Using that tinodesis. <laughs> for a quad. I'm going to set this down for now so I don't drop it. Okay. One cheese. Now, a lot of this stuff is just patience, too. Um, I can't really relate to those who have done a task as an able bodied and then are faced with the frustration of doing it as a quad. You know, something they maybe did super easy before, but now takes a different kind of skill and patience and time and work and effort. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's like a learned thing. And, you know, I had to learn it too. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff is just patience. Um, going slow, not getting frustrated. Um, it's easy to get frustrated sometimes. Uh, me and Sean were just talking before the show. You know, like we both like had to spend, we had to spend a couple hours at the end of it. I fold out table out and me and everything set up and I like practice cooking a grilled cheese to you know make sure I still got it because I've never done it on camera before and um, like you're like cussing and swearing like <laughs> when you're chopping and like so it's like I don't know it's like son of a bitch you know um so even now like I still don't have like uh mastery over it I mean, you know, it's just the nature of it all, right? But um, learning patience, uh, learning to be patient with your body, uh, you know, learning to be patient with your limitations. Uh, it's, it is a learning skill, uh, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, it just takes time too, like anything. Uh, and trust that you'll get better, you'll get faster, things will speed up, um, for sure. Okay, so I got... Two pieces of cheese on my bread. Um, I don't know how y'all do your grilled cheese. Sometimes, like, I'll put a little bit of mayonnaise uh, on uh, each side. Helps, like, the outside get a little bit soupy. Uh, I'll just do some butter uh, today. Uh, don't judge my weird. Uh, <laughs> but that's what we're going to do now. Uh, the, I'm going to put a dollop of butter on the skillet. We'll go over the cook cam. That's going to be for this cheesy um, bread right here. I'm just going to plop down once the butter gets melted. And then I'm actually going to butter this side. So when I lay it on top and flip it, um, it'll have a little bit of butter on it. Um, get nice and golden brown. And uh, yeah, as soon as we have the grilled cheese done, uh, we'll heat the soup up real quick. And uh, yeah, just chow down and chat. Um, Done with the cheese. These things, these little zippers, are the bane of my existence. But <laughs> I don't want my dad, so I'm gonna make sure to snap it. If it is taking too long, if it's more than a minute, I'm gonna wait after the show. <laughs> but let me see if I can do it quick. Uh, yeah, um, just... Garrett dropped in the chat that he has his caregivers pre-open his cheese bags. And put them in the Ziploc bags with the zipper lock because um, they're easier for him to open. Super smart. That's a dull tip, dude. 
Uh, I'll use the zipper lights before. I'm just a stubborn son of a gun. And I don't got to do zippy drink. Uh, but yeah, solid, solid advice. Yeah, I love those like, uh, ziplocks so much easier than the quad friendly ziplocks. Okay. Um, let me set this down. I'm going to butter this bread. Now, that's how I can work on my lap. Uh, I can also work like off to my side, leaning over, doing certain things. Uh, I'm going to butter this piece of bread doing that. And, um, so when you're doing that, you're leaning into your, your armrest kind of like supports you? Exactly. Now it looks kind of funny. Um, but you know, it works and it's just, it gives me the freedom to use both hands. Um, which is what I need. And I, uh, let my butter out. Room temperature was softened up, but now it's like too melty. <laughs> oh, okay. Huh. Uh. Getting a little slippery. Huh. No worries. These knife skills. <laughs> Boom. Nice, dude. Um, I also use a two handed method for buttering. <laughs> two handed. Two hand rule, um, like whenever, like my good homies, like they know, like when they hand me something, wait till I have both hands on it before they let go. Um, that's like, I call it the two hand rule. Uh, if you're like living with a quad, that's always like a good one to follow. If you're handing something off um, that has like if, any kind of weight to it, you know, make sure they have both hands on it before um, you let go. Now, that's just how I do this. You know, just use both hands. Um, squeeze like i slide the um end of the butter knife in between my um my index it's kind of resting on the back of my other shelf it just like lets it not fall and then i can put my other hand on top of it you know and, like keep it uh, where i want and have like be able to like put some pressure down to like spread the butter and boom butter in that bread Butter that bread. <laughs> yeah, there's an uh, inappropriate life. For first, and, oh, now and the knife. To... Now, this is life. <laughs> the nature of these people. Um, I'm telling you, like, what I what I would usually do if I had, like, the hankering to cook. Uh, and I got butter on the back of my hand and on my shorts, but that's okay. Um, let me grab a paper towel before I make a huge mess. Uh, is planned for some of this stuff. I usually have my caregiver, um, scheduled to show up, like, the afternoon or the evening, you know, after I want to, like, cook something that day. And, um, that sounds like a little silly, like, just wait for your caregiver to show up so you can cook, because I want to cook, and that's not the point. But the cleanup can be hard in the struggle, especially after, like, you know, cooking and figuring everything out, and then you have this giant mess. Well, then the caregiver can. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, so Tom does the cooking. Somebody else does the cleaning. <laughs> now I do the too, grossy. I ain't got nobody coming tonight, so you know your boys gonna have to clean up all this afterwards. But uh, <laughs> you know that's uh, it's a way to some success. Like, and it sounds kind of silly, but. Like, I love to cook. Like, it's something I enjoy doing. I like the challenge of it. I like the fulfillment of it. But it's also a huge task sometimes, depending on what I'm trying to cook, too. And you know, I just might not have the ability afterwards to, you know, like, do all the cleanup that's necessary. Like, it would logistically take too long. So, um, you know, I set myself up for success. And, you know, I use the limited care that I have to help balance some of that stuff out. And that's what this is all about, just setting yourself up for success. Now, I just lost my butter knife. Uh, I got more butter knives right here, um, but I'm just gonna get a little bit of dollop of butter on this spoon um, that we're gonna use for the soup. And I'm just gonna get some on my skillet. 
So you can get ready to transfer to Cook Cam. Luke. Nice. With the olive butter. Um. What's up, everybody? Oh, shoot, <laughs> let me zoom back out of there. My bad. My bad. Uh, I live in a studio apartment. I will repeat. Oops. I this is I don't have a kitchen. I have a kitchenette, which doesn't qualify for the name kitchen because it's two electric burners. <laughs> um, uh, there we go. Uh, now I know you guys can only see like part of my face, but I'll be leaning over a little bit more in a second, and I want to mostly be able to show you what my hands are doing. Um, so you just have to put up with the commentary for now. Um, now, not only do I have a kitchenette, but it's in a corner, uh, which for any wheelchair user, I, I can't go up your walls. So I like back into my wall, um, kind of get enough space to get to these burners. Now I cannot access the back burner. I can, uh, but I can't really use it effectively because I just can't reach far enough back. So I'm pretty much stuck to the front burner. Um, and electric is good. I think for quads, because flames are scary and can be super dangerous. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the electric burners can, I mean, they're just not going to like, you know, have active flames that you could potentially burn yourself on. Uh, it just heats a little bit uh, differently um, and can work, you know, just as effectively, um, depending on what you're cooking, I guess. But for simple stuff, it's normal. Okay, now I'm just going to try to shake this butter off. Or just use the back of my finger. <laughs> that works. Boom. Okay. <sighs> now I'm gonna turn the burner on. Uh, get that butter melted a little bit, and now uh, we'll get the sandwich. And the bread, get ready to plop it on there. I'm gonna grab a paper towel to clean the butter off my finger. Uh, oh, sorry, you can see the side. I always uh, pull my. I'm leaning over so much, my shirt pulls up. You guys are getting a free show. <laughs> uh, Into the table and not going <laughs> that's probably a great yeah that, that would not be advisable <laughs> um, I'm elevated uh, to give myself a little bit of height advantage over my burner because uh, that counter is a little bit higher so I'm going to try to pick this up with that without dropping it Now, here we go. Uh, we're just going to give this a minute to heat up, so maybe I'll just chill and uh, commentate uh, about the dangers and safety uh, surrounding cooking. Because, Benny boy, we love you, bro. Um, <laughs> appreciate the support, dude. Um, honestly, man, we'd love you the same if you stop. <laughs> um, but we love you, man. Appreciate it, dude. Um, all the super chats. Seriously, awesome. dude. <laughs> uh, yeah. Resume of making grilled cheese. Not this episode, hopefully. TBD to be determined if crib. Um, we're gonna try to not let that happen. But that's all we're talking about is uh, <laughs> it's part of it. Uh, you can only be so something's gonna happen. Um, you know, you're going to burn your fingers and stuff a little bit trying to do this. I can't feel the backs of my um, hands, especially like these last two fingers, the index, uh, the ring and the pinky. Backs out of I can't feel it. So I burned that a lot. Um, you know, just grazing it on like the hot pan or something or getting something out of my toaster oven. Um, 
There's a, like really easy ones just because I don't really know what's happening. I just don't realize my hands are too close. Uh, I was trying yeah. to make some gourmet, fluffy uh, scrambled eggs one time, and the method was to, like pull uh, pop the, the, the scrambled like your crème fraîche and stuff off the heat to like stir it so it cooks just from like the ambient heat of the pot, but it's off the burner. But I did that. I slid it off the burner, but my elbow was right over the top of the burner, and I got like a really really bad third degree burn on my elbow and like the other side of my arm. Uh, that was a scary one, and that was like probably one of the worst burns I've ever had, and I felt like such a dumbass afterwards. Um, mindfulness, preparedness, uh, be careful, go slow, um, you know, and personally, where I try to draw the line is hot liquids, um, you know, like, the prep rice, because I put the, you know, water in the rice cooker, um, hold, and then all boils up and I can scoop the rice out after, right? Or something like that. I'm gonna do the soup. I'm gonna show you how I do it as safe as possible using a mug instead of a bowl so I have a handle and like not hot place to grip. And I'm it to myself. But mindfulness is probably just the most important thing. And if you're dealing with any kind of boiling liquids, I really advise you waiting for a family member or caregiver to assist on those days. Um, yeah. But it was hard just because it's no joke. You spill water on yourself. That could take you out for a hot minute. We don't want that to happen to anybody. It's one of our bigger fears. Okay. Definitely. We got the butter over here while I'm talking away. Uh, it, my pan's a little uneven, so I'm going to just try to spread the butter. A little bit around the. Um, I'm just doing my elbow grab. Um, I obviously can't grip it with my hand. Uh, one, because I don't have grip. And no fine motor control. Two, because um, it's a heavy ass pin. Um, you know, for one hand, like that would just be too much. This is a cool pan. Uh, I found it at Target. Um, Again, when I was like prepping for a lot of the stuff when I moved out, and I just liked that it didn't have a big lip. Uh, the lip is really difficult for me to access um, the contents of the pan or like lip thing. So here we go. Um, I got my cheesy side of the bread. I'm just gonna plop it on there. Ben suggested a forming grill, maybe instead for your for your grilled cheese. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know, like, different kind of, I use a fork and grill for, um, like, I'll do some the quesadillas, and, like, I'll put, like, some chicken, uh, sometimes, like, some rice to be in there, and I'll use the fork and grill to make, like, you know, like, a good grill seal on my quesadilla, uh, and I do have a fork and grill, big shout out to the fork and grill, awesome, um, but I don't know, man, like, this is how I learned to make the grilled cheese, um, I have a panini press too, because I give up on, and that's a super fun nice. one to use, uh, and super awesome for sandwiches and stuff. But like I said, I wanted to show the, um, this is probably the most entry level you can get. Um, I think a good starting point for some people out there, you know, and I know some people are probably like, Psh, I got my girl cheese, uh, and probably do it better than this, but, um, yeah, this is just for the individuals out there who do find it a little bit daunting and uh, are looking for a starting point, maybe. And, you know, hopefully um, if there are other individuals out there who do get into the kitchen or cooking, might see a tip or, you know, see a tool or something that they find helpful or advantageous in the kitchen. If you guys have any yourselves that... I'm not talking about or bring it up. Please shout them out in the chat. Please link whatever it is so we can check it out. Um, just tell us how you do things too, because that's what this stuff is all about. You know, it's like all of us like sharing our uh, experiences and information to help and benefit one one another. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, uh, Ben also said he uses his foreman grill for burgers. That is definitely one thing I would use it for, but 
Uh, oh, and Gary. Um. Oh, I got the I got the other camera over here too. The wide the wide shot. I guess I should maybe turn that a little bit. Here, I'll go to uh, bow shots. <laughs> uh, and you got uh, the Californian uh, Chris. I think that's our friend Chris. <laughs> um, he he already he just ordered some takeout grilled cheese and soup on the way. <laughs> You're making. Uh, I think there's like gonna be a bunch of people eating some grilled cheese and soup in the next couple hours. You guys gotta bear with me for a second. My spatula, I forgot, dude. I dropped it when we were setting this up. I forgot to grab it, so. I'm gonna turn the heat out on my grilled cheese and grab my spatula real quick. So bear with me for a second, you guys. We're doing this live. And this is the part. That's Maybe. one of the things. Uh, probably be hard for him to show picking that up, so we'll just have to yeah. roll, roll with it. Uh, Paralyzed TV, we are cooking, Tom's cooking a grilled cheese and going to make some tomato soup. So he's got the uh, grilled cheese on the grill right now. Celtic Bear, learn to adapt. That's exactly, adapt and survive, man. That's, that's what we have to do after injury like that. You just got to figure stuff out. So we're gonna go off script for this year's. Right, oh no, you can't get the spatula? Uh, I might be able to. I just don't think I have enough time. Um, let me turn this heat down a little bit. I'm gonna just put this on top and see if I can uh, use this knife here to flip it instead. Okay. Chef's cam over here. We got the top slice. Get that bad boy positioned on there. Okay. Now, I'm gonna actually just. Okay. This off the the elbow skill is. Garrett commented earlier about your uh, elbow grab is skillful, and yeah, that thing that is uh, definitely <laughs> skillful. And, uh, yeah, it's special right here on the ground. Now I also ran over a couple paper towels that are stuck to my tire. I'm just a hot mess, you guys. This is a, <laughs> I'm a hot mess. Don't mind it. It's just it is what it is, baby. Oh. Honestly, this but, is real life because. Anytime we're doing stuff, like, things just don't tend to go perfectly well. And, you know, sometimes you got to figure it out. Um, toilet paper stuck to a heel, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. TLC is up in Nova Scotia. Negative 16 up there. Not. <laughs> uh, no, forget that. You're awesome for being able to survive that, dude. Seriously. Sure. Damn, Paralyzed is up in Canada, too. Negative 26. What are... Oh, uh, you guys are uh, too much. Uh, Mark's asking me a personal question about the Steelers in the playoffs. I would like to say they're going all the way, but they're playing the Chiefs. <laughs> and I'm afraid of the Chiefs, and uh, that's just all I'm going to say on that, Mark. <laughs> Let's get back to Tom's cooking. All right, you got the spatula back? This is the spatula that I was talking about. It's a big spatula. It's got a really wide batch. I don't know what to call that. Uh, but... It is like easy to hold stuff on because it's bigger, uh, perfect for sandwiches and stuff. Now, I did this dope earlier, like it was like a chef flip. 
Um, I doubt I'll be able to repeat it so perfectly, but we're going to try. We appreciate all you uh, viewers sticking with us. 20, 24, you guys. Make sure to um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Uh, it really helps us grow, helps the algorithm spread our video around. Um, if you get a chance to like it, please do so because uh, that also helps a lot. <clears throat> but yeah, smash that like button. Just like it too, we can't see him anyways. Don't matter. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I, th I think they still do pop up. I still feel like I saw one after they weren't supposed to. Uh, uh, but anyways, whatever you want to do, like it. Put <laughs> that in the air. Uh, okay, you guys. Um, trickiest part. You got to get the sandwich, the spatch under the sandwich, right? I just push it up against the edge, try to give a little downward force, and it usually just pops on there, no problem. So bam, we got the nice. sandwich on this. Now we gotta flip this bad boy. Um, uh, speed, strength, perseverance. Let's go. <laughs> bam. Nice flip. <laughs> flip, baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> That takes some practice, you guys. That's probably the hardest part for a long time was getting a good flip on this stuff. Um, but this is, you know, practice. We, we out here. Uh, so we're going to let that. We're going to turn the heat up a little bit. Let's finish up the sandwich. And then we'll do the soup. Now, I don't know. We're already going on like about 45 minutes. Um, no, that sounds crazy. Like, damn, it takes you an hour to like make your grilled cheese and heat up some soup. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <that laughs> <isn't... laughs> um, you know, it's just the way it is. Um, you know, that's why I like patience is a big part of this. Um, you know, I, I can do it quick, quicker. If I wasn't talking to you guys and I'm going through this, like I practice like doing it, um, you know, to get the angles down everything and um it half an hour maybe um start to finish like i mean like start to finish like i ate it um you know it only took about 20 minutes to do the sandwich when i was just like focused and doing it um but when you start it does take this long and you are focusing and doing it um, at least that's how long it took me it took it got faster quick but you know it took time um now you start to cook other stuff, you like do other things, like the skills that you develop doing that stuff will like lend to, you know, all your other cooking skills. Um, and yeah, you know, that's just the name of the game is patience. Uh, it can be difficult when it comes to like real culinary stuff. Not that this is real culinary stuff, but cooking is, you know, basically you know, chemistry and like timing, right? And, you know, putting the right stuff together, you know, and cooking it for the right amount of time and at the right temperature and, the, you know, the right order of things. Now, if you're a quad and you're limited in your capacity to move quickly, doing certain things, it just like takes time to do stuff. Organizing that timing can be difficult, you know? Odds are, by the time I get my soup going, it's gonna be hot and fresh. And I like to dip my sandwich in the soup anyway, so it's all good. But the sandwich will cool down a little bit because I can't. It's hard for me to like be doing the soup now. Probably what I would be doing right now because I do have the ability to is I get the soup going while I have the sandwich cooking. If I wasn't talking to you guys, because I'd be able to, you know, just leave it, split the attention or whatever, right? Um, but you know, the reality is sometimes I can't. You know, I got to like segment it out and, you know, I can be tough. Like you get to dinner from like finally and it's like lukewarm because of how long it took me to like serve up my plate, you know, after like I cooked whatever it was. Yeah. You know, honestly, it can be frustrating sometimes uh, a little bit. Uh, microwaves are dope. Um, you know, uh, learn to keep stuff in my toaster oven on the warm to, you know, try to keep it good. Um, uh, I'd say those are just like more finesse. Like these are the finer points of it. Um, but it's one thing that I found a little bit frustrating is trying to organize some of the timing, you know, around 
um, you know, more than one thing you're trying to cook or even just trying to cook a complex dish, you know, getting the timing down and everything can be a little bit tough. Um, but definitely do. And, you know, got to act within realistic bounds, meaning, you know, if I attempted like a filet mignon, like, you know, sitting here with like a spoon basted in it, like butter and rosemary and stuff like they do. <laughs> and, you know, these cooking shows and stuff, probably going to struggle. Oh, um, you know, might <laughs> mess up a few flame and y'all like cuts before I get that down. Um, you know, but I'm just not gonna cook that. Like, um, you know, the <clears throat> I just try to be creative, um, do a lot of stuff. Curries are one of my favorite things to cook. Um, I have this awesome rice cooker here. It's just like a Black Friday, you know, like Walmart eight dollar rice cooker. Um, but it's awesome for cooking rice. Like I can rinse the rice. I can just set the pot in there, push the little, um, you know, tab down and in 40 minutes, I'll have a pot of like freshly cooked white rice, which can be awesome with like a curry that I got going on the side, which is literally going to the, I go to like Viarta or Safeway or, you know, some kind of like, um, you know, store, go to their butcher. And if they sell like chicken breast or whatever, and it's not cut up, one of the harder things for me to do is sit there and like be the Sioux and, you know, like dice the chicken breast or whatever, like that I want to put in my curry. Um, I'll ask them to do that for me, package it up, come home and like be ready to cook. Just like open it up psh, right in the pan with my packet of, you know, curry paste and, uh, you know, all that, like tossing my half a stick of butter, uh, like butter chip, you know, and um, I got my rice and do that like, Cut up some potatoes, like, you know, boil some potatoes, get some potatoes in there, just like something easy, like cauliflower, whatever it is, like curry. Um, I love like doing stuff like chili, you know, other thing that's really awesome is Instapot. Um, Instapot can be great, literally like tossing in ingredients, add some water, hit the timer and like bing, bang, boom, you can get a ladle, you know, have a bowl and be able to just like scoop it out when it's done and you know ladle in your tupperwares for your meal prep or whatever it is um but yeah i'm talking over here maybe i'm burning my grilled cheese let me double check uh let me see if i can big ass bachelor but that is some skills you know i, I use my chin too <laughs> like sometimes two hands aren't enough I need like a third stabilizer. So like that's when Oh, see I missed oh. the flip that. Time. Yeah. <laughs> everyone everyone complimented your last flip, bro. Now you <laughs> oh, there you go. Now I almost did off the skillet. Yeah, I was gonna say a little a little wild. <laughs> Baby, look at that golden brown. Now that's nice. a little cheap there. Um, uh. let me just give this another sec. And I'm actually going to turn the burner off and let that just chill on there for a second. Now, this is just the, the delicate, the delicate snack method. <laughs> <laughs> like the burner is just this little twist knob. I don't know if the... There you, go. you can see it better now, yeah. So I'm good. There we go. Um, it's the burner that you gotta like turn or twist. Now I don't have the angle to like pinch it and twist it, um, so I just smack it with the back of my fingers and just nudge it gently in the right direction. Now again, this isn't gas. Like I don't have to worry about like turning the gas on and like blowing myself up or anything. Um, that is your situation. I hope you have like front facing burner controls on your oven. That's how like, for my house, uh, that's how they usually are like on an oven setup. Um, and usually those are a lot easier to just like jam your hand against and twist. Um, yeah. That's... But you know, just safety. Safety is always a concern. Okay. Now let me fix my shirt. And I know I'll be showing off some side from leaning over trying to cook this. 
grilled cheese. Let me uh, grab my dish. Well, that's what we're going to do. Um, I got a little bowl right here. I think we'll just put the uh, grilled cheese in the bowl, transfer the bowl to the table, and then we'll get to our soup. Soup it up. Um, and again, like, you gotta do what you gotta do. Like, you gotta hold the spatula with your teeth, you gotta hold the spatula with your teeth. That's okay. Uh, as a quad, I think teeth are definitely your third appendage and, like, mate. <laughs> You're screwed without them. <laughs> nice, There's... nice skills there. Okay. Now, I was very poorly prepared for this uh, this morning. Like, I didn't have any paper plates. Usually I use paper plates. I have a stack there on top of my fridge, but I don't have a caregiver today, so I didn't have anybody able to reach up there and get me them. And I didn't want to pull down a whole stack of plates in an open bag. So it's just, that's super happened. Uh, so I, know, I got some plastic uh, stuff. I tried. I do have a ceramic bowl. I try to stay away from the ceramic just because I drop things often, um, and that's just you know a bad recipe. Um, just target you know plastic plates and cups and stuff. Um, but ooh, look at that golden brown. Yeah. It's good. That looks nice. That looks good, dude. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. navigate this i have my grabber on my lap that i never took off and it's getting him away okay um i stole this from my uh sister I mean, like i was doing before she she's like a server and she's like pro at serving stuff up like, that she is hold, pretty good she can hold like 18 plates in her arms and like do crazy shit. um i can hold a bowl and a grilled cheese and balance it. And like, what I'll do is I'll drive with my elbow. Um, nice. And I, I do it or I make it work, but it's just from practice. Um, but it'd be hard for me to balance it on uh, with this hand just because I have less clarity. Uh, but now I got it on the table. Now we're going to do the soup real quick. Because um, I like the warm grilled cheese at least. And the cheese, will, the, the cheese, the cheese will stay uh, warm and melting away for a few. I got a little bit of time. Let me show y'all how we do some soup up in here. Um, I gotta grab a fresh spoon because my other one got buttery. I have a little silverware holder off to the side. I don't want to show it off because it's ugly and not quad friendly. I don't know why I still have it here. Place it. Um, can of soup. How do you open up a soup can? If it doesn't have a pull tab, you gotta use a can opener. I can't use a regular can opener. I have an electric can opener, which it's still hardly quad friendly. Um, because it's just not very stable. You have to like clamp the can to it, which it can actually like be a little bit heavy. And um, it usually like throws the weight of the can opener off and always falls. And, like, um, but made them work. There are other versions, ones that you like push down on a hard surface and then it just like rotates around with the motor. I recommend those. Um, Ones where the cans are stable, you're just gonna have to shop around. There's a bunch of different kinds. Um, and I just try to find cans that have a pull tab on them. Um, and I'll show you how I do that. Because even as a quad, that can be tough. I'm gonna get my um, mug, and that's what we're gonna use as holder today. We're gonna mug up. Um, because bolts are tough. Uh, bolts are tough to get out of the microwave. My microwave has like a lip, um, 
it just sits off my counter a little bit. So if I pull something off rather than like pick it up, it uh, will definitely like tilt and spill everywhere. Um, I can do that with certain things, no problem. Like just pull my plate out usually, the food will be fine. Even if it like tilts for a second, like it's not gonna fall everywhere and make a huge mess. Liquids obviously will, soup obviously will. Um, I can't pick up a hot bowl like I do mostly. Um, once I heat it up, it's going to be too hot to pick up like this. Hence the mug. A bowl with a handle. <laughs> nice. I, I use my biggest mug. Maybe not my biggest, but next to it. Uh, shout out. Tom and Tom's Coffee. And, uh, oops. Uh, in, a, uh, in, uh, Koreatown. Um, Tom and Tom's Coffee. I'm not sponsored by them. I just, they're named after me. I think it's cool. <laughs> um, and we're going to use the mug just to be able to manipulate it. If I want more soup, I can always finish off the can, I guess. Uh, but again, like, I'm not uh, in like a huge mood to like scrub. I'll just, you know, make a decent sized portion and call it good. Okay, the way we're going to do this is I usually pop the can open, just slide my finger under here, and I push the tab up until the can actually opens and I break the seal. And there I just did it. So I used now, to use a pair of scissors for that because I. I used to open my dog food cans every night when I was living by myself, and I would always try to buy the pull tabs like that, where you have to pop and then pry it off. Um, and I use scissors, which I actually have a video of if anybody wants to look back, but I couldn't do it like Tom. That, that's actually, I could never do it with my finger. I can, I can probably feel it um, with my finger uh, like back. I like think it's great. But another trick is to um, just use the spoon you know, thread the spoon through the tab. It just gives you something to leverage your thumb against and you could pull it no problem. And then you no, just- See, that's what I use the scissors for, kind yeah. of for that leverage. Air principle now. I got my spoon out. I got my soupy lid. Let me put that in the sink so I don't make these mess. <laughs> uh. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna spill some soup on my table. Don't touch me. <laughs> Here, hold on. Let me uh go to the just Tom with Noah. There we go. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. We're okay. All right. I'm in. I use all can. I may have overfilled, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, and let me, uh, the culinary camera's going to be in the way. Well, because I got to use the um, microwave broski. So I'm going to move the phone camera for now. Yeah. Maybe you can you flip can... it to the other side and lean it on the wall or something. I don't know. Yeah, I can uh, try something. But don't shut it off because I think that's the one that's your microphone right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. I wasn't going to. Let's see if I can do something. What's up, everybody? Okay, I got the close up. Oh, let's not make my face too big, Sean. Don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, this is the behind the scenes you guys didn't really get to see. It's me and Sean setting all this stuff up, trying to. Oh, <clears throat> trying to uh -huh. Oh, and then dropping my phone just like that. 
I'll get you guys back though. Oh, I think that one disconnected. Uh, uh, so that means we can't hear Tom for a moment, but that's cool. Hopefully he'll get it connected again in a second. Uh, but Quad Life, thanks for the best cooking show ever. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, here we go. Connected. There we go. We're live, you guys. Sorry about Back that. Back on. Did I do it again? <laughs> okay, let me see. So it turns out it's really hard to move your phone without touching the screen. Uh, oh, I, yeah. Dude, <laughs> it's so hard. Uh, That's right. Uh, you guys are just going to have me stuck with the ceiling for a minute. I just want to get the soup in. Um, you can just focus on the big camera. Because I can show you how I just stuff it down in my microwave. I was just sitting on a chocolate box to prop the uh, phone. I have this cool mount. It's like a little extended arm, but my iPhone is too heavy for it. And it like the clip like just kept pulling off every time. Now microwaves suck, mine in particular. Um, I usually like hook my thumb inside the door. I don't know if you guys can see it from that far away. Um, and yeah, you can see if it. I can put my thumb in there good enough, I might have enough leverage to yank and pull, um, but it can be a real pain. Um, to try to get open sometimes. Um, now again, set myself up for success. I'm going to screw my microwave a little closer to myself or to the edge of the, cou the counter so I don't have to try to lean as far when I'm placing the soup in there or um, grabbing it out. Now, sliding my microwave is an easier task said than done, but let me see. Oh, damn, you slide the whole microwave out. Yeah, baby. If you can't go to the microwave, the microwave must come to you, grasshopper. <laughs> so the one thing I had set up when I was living on my own, um, I actually, and I don't know if it looked weird or whatever, but I had my microwave brought down onto like a smaller like table in my kitchen that I could just pull under so that I could get under easily and like reach easier to get stuff in and out. Now I overfilled this bad boy. Um, to get up like different levels, I, I just prop it up against like my chin so I could use my arm to lift my upper body and then I could grab it again um, with my hand. Um, but again, like a lot of this stuff just Break it down to tiny steps. Like, and that's some crazy, like, even driving skills from Tom. I don't think those are not, you got to develop that as well, being able to hold a mug with two hands and then still control your joystick with your elbow uh, with fine yeah. motor enough to get over. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I don't really think about that one too much just because I kind of like, started doing it unconsciously. But yeah, that's a pretty, pretty good skill if you can figure it out. This is why we need like mind control for our wheelchairs because we need our hands for shit when we're doing stuff like this. Yeah. So if we could just think like move forward, back up. Alright. Had to pull my shirt down. We're trying to keep this show PC, you guys. Can't be shown on too many <laughs> too much skin, sorry. Uh, Tom Tom doesn't want to give too much of a free show. It's supposed to be a <laughs> cooking show. Family friendly. <laughs> no, no. Not only uh, Okay. So I'm going to show you guys what just happened using this camera because it is the bane of my existence. See, I'm telling uh, you, you have to get a little ring on your back of your phone. It makes it so much easier. Yeah, oh, we got... don't need a freaking ring. Okay. Um, oh, here, let me switch over. To... I, my plate, you can see the plate that's in my microwave. It popped up. Um, and went off the little spinny thing. So it's no longer going to rotate effectively and heat my food evenly. That's because I didn't have the reach to push my mug back farther. And the plate was hit, uh, weighted down on one side. Um, now, I wish I could show you guys with that camera how I fix this. But what I do is I just push the mug back 
so the plate sits evenly. And then I just got to move the plate. Um, and try to get it back on that spot. It's kind of like a game, like an arcade game, but you don't get anything at the end of it, except for maybe some hot food. <laughs> okay. We're good. Zillows and anybody that kind of came into the video late or popped on, uh, he's making a grilled cheese and tomato soup. So he already made the grilled cheese. Now he's working on heating up that tomato okay. soup. Now I got it. Um, let me just show you guys real quick. Um. <laughs> What's up? Okay, so soup is in. This is how I do the microwave. Swing it shut. Bam, closed. Um, I use my elbow to hit the buttons. I got a bony elbow. I don't know if everybody can do this, um, but bam. Now that might be too long. I don't know if I wanna get this soup boiling or not, considering and like that'll probably make it splatter. If I get some hot bubbles in there. But ooh, science! Microwaves are exciting the molecules, you guys. This shit is so cool. <laughs> Sorry. I'm terrible. Um Yeah, we're microwaving, we're microwaving. Uh this is the I don't know if I can show it. That's where I'm going to be after this show, um, doing some dishes, <laughs> uh, getting my place cleaned up. Uh, you want to stay for the after show, have with me while I do the dishes. <clears throat> um, I'm going to just set that there for now. You can just kick it on the bigger can. Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, and if y'all are looking for any advice on dishes, I don't got any. Um, just get ready to get wet. Accept it, move on. There's no way to do dishes without, you know, getting yourself a little bit wet if you're a quad. Uh, they have like, these scrubby loofahs that can like slide onto your hand. Um, yeah. Like, Specialized sponges and stuff. I recommend something like that. I have enough tinnitus to usually grip the sponge and get some leverage, but I kind of have to pull the plate or whatever it is up onto my lap, which, you know, again, gets me soaking wet. Um, I will sometimes put a towel on myself too. Um, or, you know, I need a towel. Did the dishes for the caregiver. Um, you know, too, you could uh, if you planned it out, as long as they don't be sitting in there too long. Because your mom's is going to be like, why aren't you doing your dishes? Uh, okay, we got the soup. Hot. So uh, Celtic Bear says to put a paper towel over it to stop with some uh, splashes. I do that. I do that. I just didn't think about it right now because I'm live and I'm under pressure. Uh, appreciate, appreciate the tip though, Celtic Bear. Now, the curse of the plate slipping off um, is also kind of a benefit on the reverse side of things. When I'm trying to get it out, if I can knock the plate and slide the soup a little bit closer to me, it can just give me a little bit of a distance advantage to grab it a little bit more securely. But what, I, what I'm doing, because you guys can't really see it, I'm spinning the mug so that the handle is facing me. And then I'm going to reach forward with both hands and grab the handle of the mug. And I'm not going to carry it far. I'm just going to get it down to the counter. Um, hopefully without burning myself on the hot sides. Do you have much hot and cold sensation in your hands? 
Say what? Do you have a lot of hot and cold sensation in your hands? Can you feel um, the mud I hot? I can feel the temperature where I can feel, um, but my um, ring finger and just basically the bottom half of my hand, starting with like half of the middle finger, the ring finger, my pinky, like I don't have any sensation um, on like the underside of my arm or anything like that. And like, that's from my hand too. Okay, so I got the cut out, and the sides are super, super, duper hot. Yeah. Um, this, there's an awesome tool that our buddy Mark. Yeah, over I was going to just. Um, he developed 3D printed, um, and it's awesome it's this little hook hooked onto the handle and you can hang the device from your wrist and carry the mug one-handed so you don't have to try to do what i'm doing two-handed like it's freaking yeah, dope. it keeps your hand completely um, away from the hot mug um, it's just pretty cool with them. i'm gonna plan on getting one too to help me like ease and facilitate these processes a little bit more because i'm always working on making things faster and better and easier um but big shout out to that i don't know if you're able to maybe um are they selling them sean i don't know if he is selling them you might have i think he is if you just like message him i don't think it's on his website or anything yet um but he was the guest we had on just a couple weeks ago mark from abilities um and uh i'll, I'll try to while you're doing something right now i can try to pop up a picture give his info real quick because yeah, he makes a lot of cool little products to help stuff like this. Um, I cannot keep my shirt down, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, it's all right. Oh, my my Just just box. give the free show, man. It's you know. Yeah. Um, I was trying to keep things. We're gonna be the cooking show with, with skin. <laughs> uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Let me get the show. Okay, um, I'm going to cut my sandwich in half because uh, I'd like to be able to dip. And you could just dip the whole thing, but uh, that's not what I do. Now, yeah, I'm interested to see your cutting skills, man. That's one of the things I'm not great at, is at using big ass knives like that. <laughs> don't, don't freeze frame the Photoshop that. It's going to look like I'm going to murder Sean or something. Uh, Next year for our Halloween episode. Um, <laughs> knives are tricky. Uh, you want to have some developed some dexterity skills, hopefully a little bit at that point, or use a safe knife like a rocker knife or something like that. This is my rocker knife. I mean, I'm gonna rock it in order to like cut it. Um, big. This sounds kind of dangerous and irrational, maybe, but I find bigger knives a little bit easier um, to like manipulate. Um, you know, like the thin, sharp ones are scary because they just are all over the place. The bigger ones, I can like use the back flat of the blade or just use the actual flat of the blade to manipulate it. You know, um, use the knife a little bit more effectively. Like for this, I'm just going to lay it across the... I don't know if I could get that better. I'm going to lay it across the length of the sandwich diagonally and just push down and just rock until it gets all the way through so it's my own little rocker knife and there we go uh, this is dull by the way I try not to keep super sharp knives around I'm not looking for no Japanese knife that'll like cut through you know like uh, a piece of paper you know super easy or whatever like because that's my skin if that thing falls um, so in this instance, unless you're doing really intricate culinary stuff, don't worry about having a nice blade. Like get a blade that gets the job done and is safer to use. Um, I mean, this is still sharp enough if I were to like drop it on my feet or something um, you know, from a distance and it fell wrong, like I could probably still cut myself, but I don't think it's gonna impale me to the point where I'm like bleeding out. <laughs> um, that being said, mindfulness caution consideration when it comes to doing some of these things like it might feel good to do it 
but again it's not worth months of recovery if you hurt yourself too bad that requires it you know just make sure if you are starting to do this stuff early on do it with someone around you know you can still do it independently with someone there to you know help out if you need to uh, you know it's not something you have to try to do like me just totally with your on your own with no help no backup um, because some of this stuff I mean you all know cooking can be dangerous yeah. yeah it takes time to develop some of these skills that Tom has so don't uh, you know don't don't over over test your skills the first time no maybe focus on the grilled cheese and have someone else eat the soup up for you or you know vice versa just uh, baby steps you know let yourself ease into some of this more complex stuff now this is dangerous, you guys. Like, this stuff still scares me. Like, if I pick this up and I spill, like, I could drop hot soup on myself. Um, I, I'm going to do it very carefully and confidently because I know I can do it. Um, but the sides have cooled down enough to where I can hold it for a minute. Not risk burning myself. And then, boom, there we go. Now, driving smoothly. What yeah. you have to say is very essential. Um, in fact, I don't even want to keep it on my lap because I don't trust myself. Especially, I don't want this video to go... I mean, I want it to go viral, but not because I got... Not because you spasmed and got hot soup all over you. <laughs> exactly, because that's what will happen. Like, in two minutes, my legs will spasm, and my knees will come up, and the soup will go right out all over me. Um, I don't know how you guys eat. Uh, if you like pull up to a table or whatever, I actually have a, like a lap set up. Um, a lot of times I'll just keep the plate right here on my leg and I can just balance it, eat it, do my thing. Sometimes I use like a towel or something or a tray. Cutting board is dope in this instance because I can just dip and, you know, bang, bang, boom. I hope y'all got your food because here we go. Nice. But that's it. And it's really dope. <sighs> Awesome, man. But yeah, when it comes to dining, I usually try to keep the food close enough to me where I can, you know, do everything you need to easily. Uh, plus, like, I'm a hungry man, you know, give it to me. I don't need to keep it at arm's distance. Um, when I'm ready to eat, I'm ready to go. Um, I just found it's a lot easier for me eating from my lap versus eating from somewhere else. I like to keep my chair tilted back a little bit. One, because of that post perineal hypotension that we all get. Uh, well, a lot of his quads get when we eat, which is like a blood pressure low um, mm -hmm. following eating some food uh, because a lot of the blood um, comes and surrounds like the organs in your gut and can pull it from your head and other places in your body, which cause your blood pressure to drop. Being tilted can help mitigate that feeling a little bit, at least when it hits me, like I'm a lot more comfortable and ready to like handle it. Um, it gives me balance and advantage when it comes to eating. And, um, you know, the other thing, like when I'm eating at a table, like a more formal setting, lower my chair, pull up to a table, I got to support my torso still with my elbows. Now I can have my elbows down, scoop something and bring my mouth down to like get it. Or I can balance on one arm for a minute until I can, you know, get my bite and then rest again. But it's hard to eat. Uh, when I'm like having to balance my torso as well and having to like put all my weight at my elbows. So that's why I like to be tilted back. It's just comfortable and easier for me. Uh, the My setting doesn't always dictate it, you know, especially at restaurants and things like that. I'm pretty notorious for boxing out my food and taking most of it home with me. Uh, if I go and eat out, it's just hard uh, for me to like do that. Um, I mean, sometimes I will wreck a plate of food uh, you know, at a restaurant too, don't get me wrong. Um, but um, eating how I'm comfortable is important for me. Uh, it makes the experience more enjoyable. It, you know, it's how it should be because that's what makes me comfortable. You know, um, vanity does get my way. I could probably like eat a little more comfortably out at restaurants and stuff. If I like be willing to like kick back and park sideways next to the table, you know, like I might do here. Uh, I usually won't do that just because I feel like I'm in the way or, you know, it looks silly, it looks funny. Um, but I'll, you know, snack, enjoy myself, eat some of my food, um, then, you know, box the rest of it, take it home, and, you know, enjoy the rest later on where I'm a little bit more comfortable. Um, 
you know, you just do you. Try not to worry about other people. That's the most important thing, you know. Do what makes you feel good. Do what makes you comfortable, you know. That's the important thing. And, uh, yeah, get you a munch on. I don't know if there are any questions that we missed that I wanted to talk about. Um, no, I, I think Boy, we kind of went through Olivia. most of them. Oh, Cooking yeah. Beef Kick. I think you're uh, doing me a favor of that comment, but nonetheless, love and appreciation right back to you, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah dude at uh, the very end here we got uh somebody coming in late this foo uh adrian um he made the grilled cheese over on the stove over there like on the grill actually so if you want to go back and watch this part of the video earlier it does take a while the prep and everything but he got the cheese out uh the bread put the butter on and all that stuff uh we went through it all <laughs> uh uh, now, ben has a question. How is that sandwich? <laughs> oh, it is dope, dude. Now, I am sober October for this video. Didn't want to um, imbibe anything that might make me a little bit less coordinated than I might normally be when it came to doing this <laughs> stuff live on the air for the first time. But um, it's really good. And I'll tell you what, you guys. Let me chew first. Sorry, <laughs> I got really hungry myself doing all that. Um, it, I don't know if it's a phenomenon or if there's something to it, but food you prepare yourself <laughs> when it comes out the way you want it to, it really, really is like it tastes better, dude. It's dope, like it makes you feel good. Uh, like I remember the first few times I did this, it uh. Like, it took a long time, and it was a pain in the ass, but, man, like, the fulfillment afterwards was, like, pretty cool. It made me feel really good, and, you yeah, know, it just feels good. It gives you a sense of it security. Is. You know, like, I have two caregivers out right now with COVID. Well, one just came back. Um, one is going to be coming back soon. Staying um, free, uh, thankfully. Um, but I was, you know, I had one morning nursing caregiver um, just to help me with my bladder bowel care in the morning in my shower um for like three days a week and that was it for like the last two weeks i've been doing everything on my own uh, not entirely on my own shout out kit kat came over here to help me clean my place up and organize my crazy life um you're awesome but it being able to feed myself and i mean what if i can't afford to eat out but i got you know a fridge full of food you know, i gotta be able to do something with it in these instances and in the situations like this thing is a bit of an ordeal you could do it every day i've gone weeks so i cook for myself every day um you know do meal prep so you don't have to cook some days you can just cook a bunch one day you know tupperware it up get some help tupperware it up and just have something quick and easy to microwave when you need it um can be really you know amazing and awesome and fun to do um but you know it's just about finding a balance like maybe you can't do this every day um but it might make you feel good to do it sometimes or in the instances where you know you need to because um, like i don't i haven't had anybody at least like my evening uh, caregiver she usually helps me with my my food prep or my food cleanup i do a lot of my cooking um but you know i should either usually be one or the other um but being able to do it all on my own knowing that i can feed myself I have that security if, you know, yeah. they for some reason couldn't be here, you know, show up for a couple of weeks, whatever. I mean, real life happens to everybody. And that makes me feel good. It gives me, you know, a sense of independence and security that, like, you know, really does make me feel good. Um, especially when unexpected things like this happen. Yeah, man, that's uh, for sure. I agree, dude. It's like a lot of these things you might not want to do, be able to do every day all the time for yourself. But it is really important to kind of develop the skills and just to know that, that satisfaction. And exactly. it really is like that that self-satisfaction, like that meal probably tastes that much better knowing you did all the work. And I mean, you made, you built up an appetite working for it. You, you know, you worked for that meal. So. Oh, it's dope. <laughs> and y'all didn't know Liptural just turned into a mukbang channel. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's like videos of people eating food. And like people pay to watch them, I guess. 
Well, we're cooking and that, bro. We got we're we're all facets of. <laughs> no, we're not that. I'm just uh, badass at <laughs> food. Uh, in order to uh, continue on with the podcast, uh, instant ramen, uh, super handy. Uh, Celtic bear um, for noodles. Um, the way that I do like cup of noodles or I instant ramen is I'll use the hot water for my curry um, to fill out whatever the noodles are in because it like comes out boiling um, instead of trying to heat up water on the like in a pot on the skillet for me um, which works great uh, super awesome works as effectively um, and is like super easy for me to do at least um, peace out hip crib thanks for uh, uh, checking us out man and always being here supporting us dude really appreciate you yeah, man, um, Hipcrip. Have a good yeah. rest of the day, bro. Go check out Hipcrip. It's got uh, some cool content out there, too. Give him a follow on Instagram. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it, you guys. I guess we went a little like over today. We went an hour and a half. That's all right. Cooking takes a while, man. I don't and, know. Uh, I think that was a fun show, so that was cool. All right. It's kind of entertaining um, even just for me to watch you uh, do your thing. <laughs> well, cool, man. I'm glad. I hope I was able to disseminate some meaningful, positive information um, to some individuals out there. But at least I know Sean benefited, so we're good to go. We got one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I used to do a lot more stuff like that and have everything set up for myself, you know, to use the microwave, the toaster oven, and different stuff. Um, and did a few things, but... Um, since living here these last couple of years, yeah, I don't really do a lot anymore, <laughs> but it is kind of, it is nice prepping your own stuff like that. Yeah, no, it's definitely, um, I'll do a video for Instagram or YouTube or something. Um, this foo Adrian just mentioned guac. Um, I like, I'm really good at cutting up and like preparing an avocado cause I eat avocados like crazy. Um, I've seen him cut the avocado too. It's actually pretty. That's another skill I was highly impressed with. <laughs> um, but it's funny, Adrian and uh, Zinu. I have heard of another. Uh, I'll shout out their family. I won't say who they are. That also put mayonnaise in their guac, and I too found it disgusting and strange. <laughs> that does sound weird. I don't uh, think I'm uh, all that into that. <laughs> Uh, Celtic Bear says it's my turn next time. Uh, I'll have to figure out something even simpler than the grilled cheese because the grilled cheese looked pretty hard. <laughs> uh, but we actually were thinking about trying to do more of these. So, uh, that, Tom, that was maybe. The point. Uh, we're going to get Sean in the kitchen. Uh, Bob, uh, barbecue master and Bobby. Bobby just finished building like a whole custom barbecue in his backyard. Yeah. So, we're hoping to get that going soon. Um, we're missing him today. He had a little issue, so hopefully he'll be back next week and uh, sending our love to our to our guy Bobby here. Uh, but yeah, thank uh, you all for joining us today and hope uh, hope that helped out. No, I thought it was really cool. I know that. <laughs> One last little tip. Spoons, forks. I mean, the simplest stuff can be hard, especially for newly injured individuals who haven't had a lot of time you know, to rehabilitate and understand some of this stuff. Um, last little tip, or just like show you how I hold my spoon. I don't need oh, any like to Now, everybody's hands and fingers kind of curl differently. Mine curl into a fist, um, except for my um, <clears throat> right hand is a little bit more open, and I just don't have much dexterity or use of this one at all because I can't supinate pronate. Like, I can't flip my wrist um, without turning my whole arm, whereas with this side, I can. Um, which just gives me a lot more ability to manipulate things. Um, but I don't need any of that. I just thread the spoon in between my middle finger and my index finger, and I rest it on my thumb. So the thumb is like the little tray, and it just sits. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not gripping this at all. Like, it's literally pushed far enough to where, like, you know, just sit on my thumb, like, level. And then I have enough shoulder and, like, arm strength to just manipulate it and, you know, uh, get a little scoop of 
soup if I want to, uh, or whatever it may be, you know? Um, but that's how I use a spoon. I used to use a lot of assistive devices in like my first two or three years, uh, not just for forks and spoons and knives, but also like writing utensils and stuff. And everybody's situation is different. Some of that stuff works great and they can use it for the rest of their life if you know it works well for them. Um, it kind of always it seemed like work, but then it would only be effective in certain situations or like not really be effective at all. Or I would just kind of have to like finagle things to try to get to work until I just learned to do a lot of this stuff without the devices. That's not, they were part of my rehab and they were essential for me to like understand how I could manipulate pencils and pens and certain things like that. Um, you know, how they use the straps and the putty to hold it certain ways. And that gave me the building blocks to be like, okay, if I could just do what the putty does in that situation, then I could use my second hand to like stabilize it and, you know, give enough pressure and dexterity to like, you know, make marks on the paper or something. And like, maybe I could do it without that. And it was just practice. Like I remember like being in first grade with all these assistive devices. And um, I just was like, I got, was frustrated. I like pushed them off to the side. It was like, I grabbed a crane and it was just like trying to do it without it. And that was like the building blocks to, you know, me learning how to write um, with two hands and, you know, in a very different way than most people do. I, I can do it super effectively and legibly and, you know, in a really, you know, it does take me a long time. Um, so I really don't like to throw shade at assistive devices, even if they're just building blocks to learning how to do it more independently yourself. Um, but in any case, my laptop's going to die here in a minute, so we got to wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, if you guys have any ideas for stuff you want us to try in the future, let me know. Um, if you guys like this, let us know in the comments. Uh, we appreciate the feedback always. And um, Sean, you're the man, dude. Thanks for helping me figure, helping us figure out the cameras and produce this whole thing and yeah. make it look pretty, dude. Uh, you're awesome, yeah, for man. Sure. And yeah, thank everybody else. Thank you, Tom, for doing that. Thank you guys all for being here in the chat. And then real quick, one last shout out. To our sponsors, thank you, Mobility Professionals, for sponsoring the channel. Um, and Mobility Professionals is a mobility company based in Southern California. So if you're looking for a wheelchair or any mobility products, they can help you out. And then Urology Professionals, which is also same company, but this is actually a national brand that they do catheter supplies. So anywhere in the country, in the U.S., if you're looking for catheters, give them a call. Information is down in the description below. So just want to shout that out too. And thank you guys all again for, for coming back. We always appreciate you. And um, we are back every Tuesday with live shows. We usually be here with Bobby and some other guests. And then also first and third Thursday of the month, Brianna's on. So next Thursday, check her out with the women. Always doing cool stuff. So anything else, Tom? <laughs> I, um, I'm ready to get to put this stuff away and clean it up. Uh, which I'll tell you why it's probably going to take as long as the damn cooking, <laughs> but without the show <laughs> to keep me entertained, but it's okay. I'll just make you chill with me while I clean it all up, bro. <laughs> all good, man. We'll hang out after show. We'll be clean up. Uh, all right, guys. Well, thank you all for checking us out and watching the show. Hope to see you guys back next week and a live to roll, everybody. Let's roll. Baseball. Oh.